Another Iranian scientist has been assassinated. That's what we're going to be discussing in this edition of the Press TV News Analysis, along with the bombing method, similar to the 2010 terrorist bomb attacks against another university professor, occurring on the second anniversary of the martyrdom of Iranian university professor and nuclear scientist Masoud Ali Mohammadi, who was assassinated in a terrorist bomb attack in Tehran back in January of 2010. What is driving other countries to assassinate Iranian scientists amid the IAEA silence? Along with that, we'll be discussing this and other factors in this edition of the Press TV News Analysis. Another terrorist bomb attack in Tehran. The target, an Iranian nuclear scientist. Police have covered the mangled roof of the vehicle carrying Mustafa Ahmadi Roshan. Around 8.20, when a powerful explosion rattled houses in the neighborhood, when I heard the sirens, I got out of my house. I saw a Peugeot 405, which had been mangled by the blast. There was a man inside who had apparently been killed instantly. The driver had been injured. A passerby, an old man, was also wounded. It was a heartrending scene. The latest blast bears the hallmarks of attacks targeting two other Iranian scientists, Majid Shahriyari and Freydun Abbasi. Shahriyari was killed instantly. Abbasi was injured. He was later appointed as head of Iran's atomic organization. A third Iranian scientist, Daryush Rezai Najad, was killed in a shooting attack also in Tehran in July 2011. A self-confessed Mossad agent killed another Iranian scientist, Masoud Ali Mohammadi, in January 2010. The hitman said he had been trained in Israel. The Israeli newspaper Ma'ariv has quoted American blogger Richard Silverstein as saying he was told by an Israeli source that the latest assassination was a joint operation by Tel Aviv's spy agency Mossad and the anti-Iran terrorist group Mujahideen Khal Organization, or MKO. Iran says the spy agencies of Israel's Western backers are also involved in the killings, and there are every reason to believe the claim. Maximum covert operations uh, to block and disrupt the Iranian program, uh, including uh, taking out their scientists, including breaking up their systems. Tehran also calls both the UN Security Council and the IAEA accomplices in the assassinations of its scientists. The Security Council identified individuals and entities it said are involved in Iran's nuclear program. The IAEA recently released a list of Iranian scientists thus putting them in harm's way. There are also reports that a team of the IAEA recently met with Ahmadi Roshan at Natanz enrichment facility. The assassination comes as Iran has agreed to hold a new round of negotiations with the P5 plus one group of countries over its nuclear energy program. Previous attacks took place following an IAEA report against Iran, subsequent threats from the US and Israel and Western media hype over Iran's insistence on its nuclear rights. Lots to discuss there. Let me introduce our guest, Professor at the University of Tehran, Mohammad Morandi, join us from Beirut. Mohammad Morandi, thanks for joining us. The pattern of previous assassinations are very similar to this yeah. one. First, the West condemning Iran for its nuclear program. Then the IAEA report almost doing the same. Military dimension is what they said. Then you have the sanctions that occur, and then the assassination. And most interestingly, IAEA inspectors recently had a meeting with Mr. Mustafa Ahmadi and he has now been assassinated. What is your uh, observations on this? Well, first I'd like to express my condolences to the families of the two people who were murdered today. The Western media dehumanizes Iran and Iranians so much that there is no moral sense of outrage in the Western media, and uh, outrage is sub uh, subdued among the Western population because uh, of uh, the biased information being produced by uh, American, British, and European news outlets. It's obvious that um, Western intelligence agencies are carrying these attacks out, or if the Israelis are carrying them out, it is with the knowledge of the Europeans and the Americans, because these agencies are very closely aligned to one another. They cooperate extensively. They exchange information. So it's, uh, it's really uh, uh, impossible to accept the argument that uh, the Americans or, or the Europeans do not know what's going on. Uh, what is basically uh, happening is that the IAEA is uh, being um, discredited at all levels because, after all, 
as you pointed out, the IAEA officials had met him earlier on. Uh, we've had a pass in the past. Uh, a lot of Iranian intelligence and information have uh, been given to intelligence sources as well as terrorist organizations by this organization and body. So uh, it's very difficult for the Iranians to even cooperate with the IAEA when it's putting its own people at risk. And then again, you also have the organization which is dominated by Western countries at all level, bureaucrats and the board itself, and the head of the organization, which according to the WikiLeaks documents owes his job to the Americans, it's completely biased, its reporting is biased. So basically what this does is that it angers ordinary Iranians. Uh, the, if the West thinks that Iranians uh, have any sympathy for their position when they try to s strangle the Iranian economy, assassinate uh, Iranian scientists, uh, they're, they're deeply mistaken. And it also uh, makes cooperation with uh, Western regimes and uh, the IAEA more difficult. Well, uh, when you talk about the IAEA, uh, let's expand a little bit more about this uh, report, which Iran had lots of problems with, in particular, listing scientists in its report. And then you have uh, this incident uh, to occur, basically publishing a hit list of uh, uh, Iran's personnel related to Iran's civilian nuclear program. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, whether Iran did have a legitimate concern, especially now that we see this incident have occurred? Um, absolutely. The Iranians uh, who have been hit, are, uh, all of them have had their names given by the IAEA to third parties. And, uh, but there is no, as I said, there is no outrage at all in the West about what's going on. And um, just a, a couple of hours ago, I was on a news program uh, in, a, in a Western news channel, and um, I was, they were telling me that the Fordo plant that has just been uh, op made operational is, uh, is a bunker, and a bunker, the word bunker implies something military, and it, the only reason, it's, it's, it's clear uh, that this is for producing nuclear weapons. And I said in response that the only reason why it was made under a mountain is because the United States constantly threatens to bomb Iranian installations. So it is extraordinary how the victim is blamed. Ordinary scientists are assassinated and murdered by uh, intelligence organizations, Western intelligence organizations, or organ intelligence services aligned to the West, yet they expect Iran to be more open in uh, cooperating with the IAEA. They expect the Iranians not to uh, create um, uh, nuclear installations underground, yet at the same time they constantly threat, threaten Iran with death and destruction and bombardment. It is ex ex extraordinary how Western countries and how the Western media treats Iran. Well, what about this uh, uh, accusation uh, that has been leveled against the United States and Israel by Iran? I mean, isn't it to say, safe to say that uh, the accusation of this covert war, it's not really a covert war, is it, Professor Morandi? I mean, after all, it's public knowledge. You mentioned yourself, the U.S. government is funding a central intelligence agency, the CIA, along with the Joint Special Operations Command in operations against Iran. Uh, and we know from the Bush era, that was around $500 million. Uh, it would even be more than that. Th these are the figures that we know of. Uh, it's ex again, uh, the Americans use uh, their most sophisticated drones to um, uh, fly over Iran illegally. The Afghani president, because it's done from Afghanistan, the Afghani president says that he, d he wants Afghan Afghanistan to have nothing to do with this. And the Americans write in response to the, to the Afghani president, say that they will continue with these operations. In other words, they have, no re they have no regard for Afghani sovereignty or Iranian sovereignty. So they carry out illegal acts, they car carry out espionage, uh, people are murdered in Tehran wh who are involved in a nuclear program for which there is no evidence whatsoever that it has ever had any military aspect to it. Just recently, the Russian deputy foreign minister 
said on Russian television that we, we have analyzed all the material out there and there is no sign that Iran's uh, nuclear program has ever been uh, anything but peaceful. And in fact, just a few days ago, I, ha I met a, um, a well-known American journalist, Mr. Seymour Hirsch, and he was saying that American senior officials know without a doubt that, the United, that Iran is not pursuing nuclear weapons. And the issue is Iranian sovereignty. The issue is Iran's independence. So it, it's quite clear that uh, the, the policies of the United States and, and its European partners are not really directed at the Iran's nuclear program. It's directed at Iranian independence and sovereignty. Well, uh, it's c pretty c curious as to why this would happen at this stage, though, Professor Mirandi. We're going uh, to get to that point you just made at the end there. But first, Iran just announced days back that it had reached an agreement with the five permanent members of the UN Security Council in Germany to resume uh, nuclear talks in Turkey. So uh, why would this assassination take place at this point in time? What message is this sending? Well, it's, it's not just this. It's the um, embargo that is trying to be implemented, implemented against Iranian oil uh, and the uh, sanctions on the Iranian central bank by the Americans and the Europeans. This is all of this is directed specifically at the Iranian public. In other words, they want ordinary Iranians to suffer. Initially in the past, when the Americans and the Europeans imposed sanctions, they were claiming that it was to hurt the Iranian government and not directed at ordinary people, although the WikiLeaks documents clearly show that this is not the case. Uh, but uh, now it's become quite evident that the objective is to make ordinary people suffer. In fact, the same is true in Syria. Just recently, there was a poll carried out by the Qataris that showed the majority of Syrians actually support Assad, and this is a Qatari poll. But the Americans and the Europeans impose sanctions on Syria because they want ordinary people in Syria to suffer in order to dissuade them from supporting the government. The same is true in Gaza. When Hamas was elected, they elected the wrong people. So the Europeans and the Americans, the Israelis and the Mubarak regime, impose an embargo on Gaza to force the uh, people of Gaza to, to uh, move against their elected government. This is basically a, a, a very Eurocentric, arrogant uh, uh, state of affairs. And I think it, a lot of this uh, has to do with the fact that the United States feels very much threatened by the fact that many of its allies in the region have either been overthrown or the regimes are unstable and they feel that they're losing the Middle East. And this is a, a, a power grab by the United States by attacking all those countries that are in any way or form against American and, Euro and, and European uh, policies in the region. Of course, we need to expand a little bit more uh, about uh, the U.S.'s efforts uh, along with other countries, Western countries, in terms of actions against Iran. I mean, overall coordinated U.S. and we had uh, mentioned Israel and their campaign of cyber terrorism along with the U.S. commercial sabotage, targeted assassinations such as this uh, recent one and proxy wars against the Iranian governments. But they all have failed. Uh, do you think that these approaches, in some form or another, is going to backfire uh, on the United States, on Israel and their allies? Definitely. When you assassinate ordinary Iranians on the streets of Tehran, how do, you, uh, how, how do they expect or, uh, people in Tehran and in Iran to, to, to respond? It's, it, there, there's a strong sense of outrage. When they impose sanctions on the Iranian central bank or on the oil industry, uh, again, this is directed at ordinary people. They are only antagonizing Iranians. And people outside of the Western world recognize what is going on. They recognize that this is the Western empire that is beginning to show uh, signs of, of, uh, of, of a major weakness and decline, uh, attempting to, to punish its critics and opponents uh, in any way or form possible. Because at the end of the day, these are, these, the sanctions that they're trying to impose are supposed to be punitive sanctions. They're supposed to make people, ordinary people, suffer. And if you look at the Western media, there is no talk about the fact that these sanctions are barbaric, whether it's Iran or Syria or Palestine and Gaza. It's whether they're effective or not. There's no question about how ordinary people would suffer or, for example, in the past when Iranian 